So let's start then with, uh, first of all, RAS and its gap-mediated GTPase reaction, because that is really the paradigm for many of the things that have been developed afterwards. So this is the molecule RAS. It's a, a ribbon representation of the structure of, of the G domain of RAS. And you see it's heart-shaped because uh, obviously we like it very much. Uh, and uh, we solved the structure in Heidelberg when the city of Heidelberg has this advertisement, I love, ich habe mein Herz in Heidelberg verloren, which means I lost my heart in Heidelberg. But the most important reason it's heart-shaped is because people call it the beating heart of signal transduction. So it's one of the most important sort of molecules that regulates uh, important signal transduction processes like growth, differentiation, and sometimes even apoptosis. And you probably know a little bit about the signal transduction process because every textbook has sort of this version. This is one of the paradigms of signal transduction chain, whereby, for example, a growth factor binds to the uh, cell membrane and, and uh, binds to its growth factor receptor called RTK, receptor tyrosine kinase, whereby this becomes phosphorylated. It recruits the exchange factor SOS, which then activates RAS to the GTP bound form. And then now RAS interacts with the downstream component, which is rough kinase, which is the starting kinase for what is called the MAP kinase module, where one kinase uh, activates the next downstream kinase, which is called MAP kinase kinase kinase, activates MAP kinase kinase, and that, that activates MAP kinase, which then goes into the nucleus and activates transcription. So this is a very simplified version of what RAS is actually doing, and this is the first one to be discovered first signal transduction sane, but now it probably becomes more and more complicated, and this is still a very simplified version, but it shows you already the major sort of thing about signal transduction via RAS, in that many upstream sort of components come and activate RAS. It's either tyrosine kinase receptors or G-protein coupled receptor, T-cell receptors, all of them can activate RAS. And then RAS can activate downstream many components, not just rough kinase, but also a molecule called RALDGEF, PI3 kinase, PLC epsilon, and, and, and others. And uh, they sort of mediate a, a, a number of signal transduction sort of reactions, which sort of somehow are sort of uh, integrated somewhere, let's say in the nucleus by a, sing by, by a transcription factor, and initiate when the threshold is right, when the number of sort of uh, reactions is right, it initiates a cellular response, which can be proliferation or differentiation or whatever. And I will not deal with any of the aspect of this because I want to concentrate on the switch-off reaction. So the switch-off reaction is again the scheme. You have seen this now many times. But what happens is RAS is also an oncogene. An oncogene that has two types of mutation, either glycine 12 mutated to any other amino acids or glutamine 61 mutated to any other amino acid. And what this, what this does biochemically is it blocks the gap mediated GTPase reaction. So you can imagine what happens. You have blocked the uh, return to the inactive state. And that's why you now accumulate RAS in the GTP bound form. You don't need any of the upstream signaling anymore because RAS is already in the GTP bound state. And now it has an effect that is sort of not regulated anymore. And that's why it leads to cancer. Yeah. So these simple mutations, and that's why obviously as a structural biochemist, this is a very interesting project to ask the question, how can it that a simple point mutation uh, has such dramatic consequences? And it's also, obviously, since RAS is the most frequent oncogene, so it, about 25% of the people that come to the clinic with then recognize, is diagnosed with a tumor, they have a RAS mutation, one of the ones that I've shown you. At least these are the most frequent ones. So obviously, every drug company also uh, uh, are working on trying to inhibit the RAS pathway, RAS signaling, as a way of treating uh, at least RAS-mediated cancers. And uh, there are many approaches that one can think of. I just indicated a few here. For example, you could think of, for example, RAS is at, far nesylated at the, at, at, at the C-terminal cysteine, and there's an enzyme called farnesyl transferase that mediates that reaction. There are farnesyl transferase inhibitors that are just uh, in the clinic tested for, for the efficacy. But you could also think of maybe inhibiting the interaction with downstream effectors. This is, for example, a structure that we determined the complex between RAS and RAF kinase, or part of RAF kinase at least. Or you can even think of, and that's what we are working on still, 
sort of our dream sort of approaches if the basic sort of feature of oncogenic RAS is that it cannot hydrolyze GTP, can we maybe think about making small molecules that would induce GTP hydrolysis on oncogenic RAS? This is probably a dream uh, project and we still sort of uh, work on it to, to, to make it feasible.